love for us is intentional it always has been always will be so what we want to do now is continue in our worship and all of this is for his glory hallelujah Lord, 
if I find favor in your sight, Lord, please hear my heart's cry. I'm desperately waiting to be where you are. Across the hottest desert, I'll travel near or far for your glory. I will do anything just to see you, yeah, to behold you as my king for your glory.
Cause peace is where you are And joy is where you are And love is, love is who you are Hallelujah, hallelujah We're going to take a little break from our worship music And turn it over to our minister of today, Elder Kathy Petway. Thank Elder you, Kathy, Lonnie. Thank you. Thank you so much. Want to be where you are. Hallelujah. Peace is where God is. Love is where God is. Joy is where God is. Why? All because of for his glory. Amen. Amen. And Amen and amen. So good morning, good morning, and welcome to Life Builders Church, where our pastor is Bishop J. Charles Carrington, Jr., and our first lady is Pastor Althea Carrington. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you haven't had a moment, please share the Zoom link information as our bishop has left us wanting more from last Sunday when we had our in-person worship. So please, please, please share the information because we are looking forward to receiving all that God has given him for us, right? We want another good meal from him today. As I stated on last Sunday, that type of word that just sticks to you and stays with you and we can use for energy and fuel throughout the week, amen? Amen. So please share with family and friends and let them know Life Builders Church is online. All right. Again, thank you, Brother Ronnie, for those wonderful selections. And we will be hearing a little later in the service from you again. So thank you. Our scripture today can be found in the book of Psalm chapter 8. Again, our scripture for today is Psalm 8. If you want to join me there, very familiar scripture. O oh Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings has thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightiest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy hands, the moon and the stars, which thou has ordained, what is man? Mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him. For thou has made him a little lower than the angels and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou has put all things under his feet all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Amen? Amen. See, Psalms 8 tells us how majestic our Lord's name is in all the earth. His name is what? Excellent full of splendor and magnificence. Our God is so majestic and powerful that one name alone doesn't fully represent all we need to know, amen? God is so awesome that he has a name for whatever you're facing. His name alone can what? Strengthen and empower your situation. So when we discover the name of God that applies to our situation, right? Come on, somebody. You will fully uncover the power, the potency, the privilege, and the productivity that comes with that name in all the earth. Amen? Amen and amen. I just want to encourage somebody. It's something about the names of God. Amen? And I want to say to you this morning, getting to know God's name is more simply than learning a new word or trying to sound cute when you talk or pray. Come on. Learning to know God by his names, that it, it opens up the door to knowing his character more fully 
and experiencing his power more deeply. Anybody want to know him in a greater way? I said, I do. I do. Anybody want to know him in a greater way? If you're tracking with me this morning, type in the chat. I do. I do. I do. You want to know him in a greater way, more fully and understand his power. So before we welcome our guests and say our declaration, I wanna remind you that he is what? Since we are talking about God's name, he is Emmanuel. Come on somebody, God with us. He is Elohim, the strong creator. Elohim is here, there, everywhere because he's multidimensional, amen? Come on somebody, he is Jehovah the relational God. I know all of us know some compound names of God with the word Jehovah in it. Come on, type one of God's powerful, potent, productive names, Jehovah names in the chat. Come on, let me see if you are with me and you are tracking with me this morning. Anybody know some Jehovah powerful names of our God, the magnificent God, the name that is magnificent and excellent in all the, the earth. Anybody know some Jehovah names? That's right, I see Jehovah Nisi, that's right. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, my banner. Everybody knows Jehovah Jireh, right? The Lord, our provider. Elohim, Elion, most high God. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, what? Is peace, come on. Jehovah Saba, the Lord, our warrior. Jehovah Rahi, the Lord, my shepherd. I'm so glad he is my shepherd this morning. Jehovah what? Sit canoe, the Lord our righteousness. But one of my favorites, one of my favorites, can I just take a couple moments and tell you one of my favorites? One of my favorites is what he said to Moses. He said, I am who I am. I am self-existing. I exist in myself. Nothing outside of me contributed to my existence. Stay with me here. All of us existed because we were created, right? But God is complete in himself. I am who I am. I'm everlasting. I never change. I'm always now. I'm present. I will never become irrelevant because I'm always caring. I'm a present help in the time of trouble. A right now God. Come on. Let's give our El Shaddai, the Lord God Almighty, praise this morning. Amen, amen, amen. I thank you for all that love in the chat. Jehovah Rapha, that's right. All right, I love it. I love it, I love it. That's the God, the Almighty God, L-O-M, Jehovah Rapha. Hallelujah. Jehovah Medi Me Mechadishkam. Yes, I remember that. Thank you, Lord. Jehovah Mekadishkam, that's a new one, the Lord who sanctifies. This morning, we are glad that he what? Redeemed us, justified us, reconciled us, and sanctifies us. Hallelujah this morning for the mighty, mighty God that we share. Amen? Amen. If this is your first time worshiping with us, let us know in the chat so that we can show you some love. Well, again, on behalf of our pastor and first lady, we welcome you. And we are so glad that you chose to worship with us today. So if you are a first time viewer watching us, please show us, uh, let us know in the chat. We would love to connect you. All you have to do is say, I'm a guest or first time viewer and our LBC partners will do what we do, which is show love because we are so grateful and appreciative that you share you decided to share with us and join us this morning for this worship service. And as always, we would love to connect with you. So if you would like additional information on our ministry, please email LBC Ministry. That's the letters L B C Ministry at yahoo.com. Again, if you would like additional information on our ministry, because we love to connect with our guests and visitors, please email us and we will be sure to follow up with you. So again, welcome and thanks for joining us this morning. All right, LBC and friends, it's time for our declaration. All right, if you will follow along on our screen, we're gonna say our declaration this morning. Amen, as our chronicler is bringing it up. 
And we want to decree and declare these words over us. All right. Now we have already, God is already in the, the room, Emmanuel, God with us, right? And we have given him praise through those powerful names that we have said, and I know he hears us. So now as Life Builders Church, let's declare our corporate confession. Life Builders Church is a church and ministry focused on the agenda of the kingdom of God. We are corporately called to be a people of prayer, kingdom action, kingdom building, building, and transformers of lives and builders of people that know their purpose and take their place as productive citizens of the kingdom of God. We have God's mandate. We have all necessary components in place, inclusive of power, provision, personnel, and people. We have men for the vision and people for the work. We have everything we need. We have all that God ordained for us to have, possess, and obtain for his purpose. We are a stable house with longevity. We are relevant. We are vibrant and fresh. We impact this generation and future generation for his glory. 2022 is our year to retake mountains and territories lands and platforms with divine strategies and solutions as we build and expand for the kingdom and the glory of God. We, I said we, we without fail recover all. Amen and amen, amen. I want you all to show some love to Deborah Hightower and to Charlotte Hightower. You know how we do LBC. Let them know we are so glad that they have joined us this morning. And that sounds like a common name. So we thank Brother Hightower for inviting his family and friends because that's what it's about. We got to share this gospel and share the word to all as Matthew 28 and 19 instructs us to do. Go and what? Make disciples. So continue to share this word, continue to share this ministry and invite people to life build this church. All right, let's continue in worship with Brother Ronnie Lockhart. Thank you. Elder Kathy, thank you so much. Thank you for that awesome scripture for today and our awesome declaration. And you touched on something very important. We know God by so many different awesome names, but one of the names that wasn't thought of or wasn't uh, vocalized was we know he's the way maker. <laughs> Wait, 
Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, church. Thank you, LBC, for this praise and worship period of our worship service. I'm going to take a little time now because our senior pastor had a little bike accident, but he's all right, but he's just moving a little bit slower. So it is now time to bring to you the word this morning. Continuing from our lesson last Sunday, the senior pastor of Life Builders Church, Bishop J. Charles Carrington, J.R. Thank you, Brother Ronnie, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Hobbling around is no fun, but I praise God. I caught my foot in the uh, stirrup of my bike, and as I was getting off, uh, the, foot, the foot got caught in the stirrup, and the pedal went forward and hyperextended my knee. So, uh, hey, I'm hobbling, but I'm high on Jesus. <laughs> Can you lift your hands and let's bless God? 
are together. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to the Lamb of God. He's faithful. He's awesome. He's mighty. He is Jehovah Rapha. Lord God, I couldn't walk a few days ago, but I thank you that I'm able to walk, even hobble, and go up and down the steps. Lord God, you bless us. You may not do it all at once. You may do it progressively, but we're healed, we're delivered, and set free. Lord, have your way today. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your power. I thank you for the anointing, yoke destroying, burden removing, devil casting out anointing that's still pervading, Lord God, that's still overwhelming the kingdom of darkness and blessing our lives. Lord God, hide this your servant behind the cross and all of you be seen and heard and not just me. Take me out of self. Use me for somebody else. This indeed is my prayer in the great and strong name of Jesus. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor because you are the great I am, the Lord God Almighty, and we worship you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Elder Kathy, doing a great job as usual. We do not take you or any of our other staff for granted. You all, Pastor Al and I, are very much appreciated. You all are blessed. And I'm looking forward to the day where we can do more than we did last week for our ministry staff. I want to do so much more for all of our leaders, but thank you all for being humble people, good people. Ronnie, great job in leading us into worship. I feel the presence of the Lord, I tell you. Y'all excuse me, I'm already high, I'm already flying. <laughs> Whoa, God have mercy. And I have no shame about the way I give him glory. Like David, I play before the Lord. I worship him. I'm not going to take off all my clothes. I ain't going to dance myself out of my clothes. But while I'm sitting here, I'm sure going to give him glory. Y'all ready for the word? Lord God, we thank you. Now hold up your Bibles, everybody. While we are here together for worship, whether you have it by page, whether you have it by tablet, like I do, whether you have it by your phone, let's join in together and declare, Lord, I thank you. Come on. Lord, I thank you that I have my Bible. It is my personal copy of basic instruction before leaving earth. I am a believer, not a doubter. I'm not just a hearer but I'm also a doer. And my life is so much more the blessed because I hear and I obey the word of the living God. I now declare my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will not be distracted, but I will hear what thus saith the Lord. And as a result of what I hear today, I'm going to leave this experience better than I came to it. In Jesus' name, amen. Beloved, let's jump right in. We started talking last week, and, and I just left the notes. I, I, I just, the power of God was in the place. I felt the heat of the presence of the Lord all last week while we were in Pikesville. And I feel that same heat right now. Lord, hallelujah. And it, it's not the house heat either. <laughs> I feel the presence of the Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Beloved, we're talking about faith for reformation. This is part two. Last week we started, and um, we started talking more about personal reformation, singular reformation. Today, if the Lord allows me, I want to get into not just the personal aspect, but also the corporate aspect. Because as we begin saying on last week, the church is not what we need to be. I can say it, because not only am I a duly consecrated apostle and duly affirmed apostle and consecrated bishop in the Lord's church, I don't have to be on the front cover of Charisma. I don't have to be on, my God, every marquee on everybody's conference, beloved, but I am a man of God proven and I have a proven pedigree. And God, most of all, confirms his word with signs and wonders. So his church is being called back to him. We are being called back to him. We've been 
in everything else but him. I know that folk don't like getting exposed. But I woke up this morning after my prayer time and I, I spent time with the Lord. And, um, you know, I have to because without prayer, there's no power. And God spoke to me that there's a time of exposure coming. I, I don't have all the specifics. Certainly, I'm not trying to talk uh, political exposure, not even trying to talk church exposure. But I'm talking a time of exposure that's coming because there have been some things that have been happening that God's not pleased with. There have been some folk that have been a few in number, but have influenced the masses. And those that could say, I'm not going to do it, have been complicit. I will say this, part of this exposure is going to come to and through the media. The prophetic word has gone forth before. I'm not going to call the name, but there are certain media companies that are having to lay off workers. God have mercy. Large media companies that once, once ruled the, the uh, environment, once ruled uh, the landscape. Oh, my God. And uh, exposure's coming because they've been complicit with wrongdoing. And God is calling it out in and out of the church. And part of that is if God calls out wrong, God must establish a model or a principle of what's right. How would we know what's wrong unless it be for that which is right? The church has become an entertainment center. The church has become eager about compromise with the world to get the world to like us. I once made a statement, and this is a direct quote that I came up with, not to get any money for it, but to make it known that we take too much time trying to get people to like us and too little time getting people to fall in love with Jesus. Beloved, it is time that we begin again to declare the message of the gospel. So it's time for reformation. Now, the Bible says in James that faith without works is dead. And we are in deep and desperate need of reformation. We are in deep and desperate need for reformation. This word may be only mentioned maybe once in the Bible, in our King Jerry James interpretation. But there are synonyms as we said on last week, to the word reformation. One synonym is the word conversion, to take something that is old, not change it from its original appearance on the outside, but do something on the inside that makes it almost new, converted. I remember in the 70s, there were conversion vans that came out, late 70s. Some of y'all, I know you were dating ourselves, but uh, I remember captain's chairs in convergent vans and, and, and tables and some people with other motors. Brother Ronnie, I know it wasn't you, so I won't look over there, had beds in the back of convergent vans. Now, some used them for camping, right, Ronnie? <laughs> that we went camping. <laughs> oh, God, or, or if we were on a long trip like track the trailer drivers, we would go in the back and get some sleep. You know, seriously. So those convergent vans uh, were built and made very popular back then. And nice. There were some nice ones. Goodness gracious. Chrome uh, 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 running boards and tailpipes and all that nice stuff. New paint. And they would make you say, man, I'll go sleep in there. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Ronnie because I don't want to think I'm talking about him. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it is such a wonder to know that word. Reformation is also synoptic with the word conversion. It is also a synonym of the word renewal. And these words are mentioned consistently in Scripture. So Reformation is not a new thing. It's a needed thing. Let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Part 2, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 6 through 12. I want to briskly read this and get into our word today. We got a lot to cover and we're not going to take all day to say it but as the Holy Ghost leads we're going to leave here with a strength and faith for reformation 
Hebrews 9 verse 6 declares, Now when these things were thus ordained, the priests went always into the first tabernacle, accomplishing the service of God. But into the second went the high priest alone, once every year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the errors of the people. The Holy Ghost, this signifying that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while as the first tabernacle was yet standing, which was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect as pertaining to the conscience, which stood only in meats and drinks. Hello? Hey. divers washings. Lord have mercy. And carnal ordinances imposed on them until the time of reformation. But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, God have mercy. That is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered into the once place, the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Now, Jesus entered into that place once, obtaining eternal redemption for all of us. So there are certain things we don't have to do anymore. We don't have to burn animals anymore. We don't have to have the priest lay hands on a goat and call it the scapegoat and take it into the wilderness and lose it anymore. We don't have to have blood sprinkled on us or the altar for us anymore. The Bible says the apostle Paul wrote, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is our reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. There's another synoptic word for reformation. By the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God. Beloved, let's jump right in. Let's jump right in. Because I want to ask a series of questions. Come on, Chronicle. The questions are avoidable. So here they are. Are we as a church today representing the will, the plan, and purpose of God in the earth? Don't answer. Just think about it. Are we as a church? I'm not talking about light builders. I'm talking about the body of Christ at large. But we can take it as light builders. Because when others don't do, we will do. Can I get a witness? Are we seeking to be powerful? or popular. God have mercy. Are we impacting lives in order to bring needed change? Lord. Is the word of God still relevant to us? Is it still real to us? Question five. Are we in our present manifest state this is a big question. A threat to the agenda of the kingdom of darkness. I want you to keep it there, Minute Chronicle, because question five is really what we got to think about. Because in many ways, Satan is laughing at us. Keep it right there. We're fighting amongst ourselves, tearing down one another. I saw on the other day, Facebook, Somebody had an article up. Bishop T.D. Jakes finally comes out. Bishop T.D. Jakes finally comes out. And they listed that article for sensationalism. No, it wasn't talking about homosexuality or him coming out the closet. It was fussing about him going to P. Diddy's birthday party. <laughs> oh, what a topic to have to talk about on Facebook. What, what 
what valuable time was wasted talking about going to a birthday party when many don't know that Bishop Jakes and Pete Diddy just signed a major deal together to do some great things. How do you not know that Bishop Jakes is not working to win P. Diddy? They were talking about him having, uh, he shouldn't have gone because there was booze at the party and reefer at the party and <laughs> all this stuff. Now, I want to ask y'all a question. Y'all remember this short dude named Zacchaeus? Y'all remember when he was so short? How short was he, Bishop? He was so short that he had to climb the tree to see Jesus. And Jesus looked up and said, I'm coming to your house today to have lunch. This man was a thief, a robber. He was a publican, a sinner. And this short dude, in the presence of the people gathered, and most of all in Jesus' presence, without provocation, repented and said, I'm giving back a fourth of my goods to pay people back for what I stole from them. Oh, man. How would Zacchaeus have repented without the presence? Can I submit we need reformation? Because there's a whole bunch of people that are telling other people to repent, but we don't have enough people manifesting the presence. Let me move on. I realize that there may be some thinking, man of God, like I said last week, I got bills. I got a wayward child. I have uh, my husband don't love me no more. My wife don't love me no more. My children talking about putting me in a home and not coming to see me. My, my parents are talking about moving away and not telling us where to forward the money requests. You know, we got folk that are single and frustrated, angry, upset, thinking they should have been married by now or at very least dating somebody. We got folk that are dating that wish who they dating would die. I mean, we got all kinds of Stuff going on, real stuff. And if I haven't come down your street, believe me, the truck is on the way. But so many people are saying, Bishop, I, I, I know you're a man of God, but how does talk of reformation impact my life today? I got problems. I got situations. I had to fire my daycare provider because I came over the house and there was marijuana smelling in the house. And, and, and my child was getting the contact high from it. Lord, they wanted more munchies than they ever had before. I, I, I'm trying to help God have mercy. I'm trying to figure out what in the world can I do with less money and more bills? I couldn't wait till y'all started asking me those kind of questions. I told you one Sunday I'm going to gear to questions. And if y'all don't have none, I'll preach. But I'm glad y'all were thinking this question. I'm glad because when I read and study the word of God, back in Acts chapter 2, yeah, keep it on me for a minute, Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4, it, it talked about the church being what Jesus died for it to be. God have mercy. It talked about the manifest the church of Jesus Christ, standing firm on the word, standing powerful on the principles of God, and in Acts chapter 2, one of the foundational scriptures and texts of our church, verse 41 to 47, you don't have to read it now, but look at it sometime, refresh yourself with it, because it talked about needs were met, spiritual needs, come on with me, God have mercy, physical needs, God have mercy, emotional needs, Lord have mercy, financial needs. Can I go over that list again? Needs were met. Spiritual needs, physical needs, emotional needs, financial needs. It goes on to say all were blessed, provided for, and the Lord saw to it that the church was totally blessed and really 
highly favored. You know, keep it there a minute, Chronicle. I wanted to make sure everybody get that. You got a lot of people walking around saying, I'm blessed and highly favored. We, we, we're not really blessed and highly favored like the early church was because we're not doing what the early church did. Beloved, I'm going to say some things, beloved. I'm going to go into it. I'm going to dump right, drive, drive right in that. And uh, you just got to get out the way if you don't want to be hit. I love you. But here I come. Beep, beep. I'm coming. The church is supposed to be the stage setters for society. Come on, Chronicler. The church is supposed to be called out as salt and light. The church is supposed to be the vehicle through which God blesses the world. Can I say it? God has blessed us. We took those grants, bought quality food. We fed over 7,000 during the pandemic, which is just a drop in the bucket, really. But God said, since you were faithful and least, I'm going to make you ruler over much. Ha! Ah. I don't want nobody getting upset and mad and question how God blesses us when he begins to do it. Because I want to know <laughs> there's no way that we can say we're blessed, provided for, and the Lord sees to it that we're blessed unless we are reformed from the current way of thinking. I just got a question. Are we ready? For reformation. I, I, I just want to ask, are we ready for reformation? Are we ready? Keep it there. Just count to 10 and then come on the chronicle for reformation. Are, are we ready? Because I believe that before Jesus come back, because he said he's not coming back for a broke, busted church. He's coming back for a church without spot, wrinkle, or any such thing. That church was the early church and likened unto it signs and wonders, miracles, manifestation, folk getting fed, folk getting healed, demons cast out. Now you want to talk about your needs being met. I want to put out a challenge. Are we ready for reformation? Because I see that we that had our needs met, prayers answered, way made out of no way, God meeting needs, God answered prayer, our households in order, our marriages better than they've ever been. We happy the most when we're about being what God called us to be. Let me calm down. Let me let me calm down. I I I I, I have scriptural proof. I don't want to break my table, but I have scriptural proof. That folk were happiest when we were doing things God's way. Are you ready for reformation? Now, 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 to get into this for the next few moments, I'm going to refer to a bit of theology. There's a term I want you all to remember because I didn't make a big deal of it. But last month was Reformation Month. Last month, Hundreds of years ago, in Germany, a man named Martin Luther took out and nailed points on the wall of the Church of England. And the Church of England had influence in Germany. And that's when the Protestant movement started, the protests. Because in the church back then, they were more about money. Sound familiar? They were collecting indulgences. You could pay for your sins. Jesus was supposed to be the one paid for your sins. No, you could pay the priests and you're absolved mm -hmm. from your sin. Back then, you know, uh, there was indulgences that were paid. When you messed up, instead of repenting, you pay off the priests. <laughs> Money changing hands. Let me hold something so I can fold something kind of kind of stuff, you know. But there was a term, solus Christus. I want y'all to remember this term, solus Christus. And this term meant that 
faith in Christ alone. That was the primary point that Martin Luther had to make in his thesis. Solus Christus. There's only faith in Christ alone. There's no other way to God the Father. No other advocate, God have mercy, that we have but Jesus Christ and him alone. He paid the price for the ransom from our sins. He alone paid the price for the redemption of our souls. Here's what the Bible says. Jump with me to Ephesians 2. I got to get out of here. I feel the preacher coming. But Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 declares, For by grace, God have mercy, are we saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his, his workmanship. My God created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. My God, before you go on, Chronicle, go back one, 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 more, one more, more slide and get hold us, Christus. I want us to remember that. I know most of us are not theologians, but shock somebody one day and said, Solus Christus, faith justified by faith, God have mercy, in Christ alone. I'm not justified by works. I'm not justified by paying money. I'm not justified by tithe and giving offering. I'm not justified by selling dinners to help raise money for the church. I'm not justified by singing on the choir. Y'all better look out, I'm coming down your street. I'm not justified by putting on an usher uniform. I'm not justified by putting on a backwards collar and wearing a cross around my neck with a chain. I'm not justified by title. I'm not justified by anything but, but the blood of Jesus in Christ and in Christ alone. Woo. For by grace are we saved. Come on, Chronicle. My God, we are saved by grace. My God, through faith, grace is God's favor and divine empowerment. Through faith alone in Jesus Christ am I saved. Can I say that again? Grace, divine of empowerment, God's favor. My God, somebody ought to write in the chat. I'm saved by grace uh, through faith alone. Uh, he didn't have to save me. He didn't have to make me. He didn't have to change me. Oh, I, I'm going too fast. I, oh, Lord, I, I, I rejoice because uh, nobody can brag about how saved we are. Nobody can brag about how holy we are. Oh, one of the names we talked about while Elder Kathy was calling out the Jehovah names. Uh, my God, Jehovah Tiskanu. Uh, God, my righteousness. Uh, I'm only righteous because the Lord has made me righteous. There's nothing I can do by my own deeds. Uh, I remember, I'm going to say a couple of old songs in a few moments. But I remember the song we used to sing. Uh, what can wash away my sins, uh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? Let me calm down. Let me let me calm down. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The refrain says, Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount. I, I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Can I tell you there's no other power to save? Can I tell you there's no other name that can save? Can I tell you there's no other Savior? Oh, God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you that our faith, our system of belief, uh, is in him and him alone 
above all others and all else. I know folk get offended when you say stuff like this because folk hold their religion tightly. But ain't no bit of religion going to keep you. Ain't no bit of religion going to save you. Unless you come to God through Jesus, there is no salvation. I know my Buddhist friends don't like it when I say that. And I have some friends that are Buddhist. I know my Muslim friends don't like when I say that. Because they've been taught that there is no other advocate. Allah is God. and uh, 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 uh. They talk about Muhammad as this chief prophet. No, my brother. No, my sister. You're wrong. There is no prophet that is worth talking about but Jesus. There is no prophet. No advocate no powerful god like jesus says i'm sorry if i offend you but Hare krishna put down your tambourine and take off that orange robe and grow your hair back because you're singing in the airport and you're beating the tambourine is not enough jehovah witness you already believe that only 144,000 are going to make it if i count back to the original understanding of your faith system between then and now, I'm sure that there's been enough people to make up the 144,000. So you can stop standing on the corner in the cold, doing works, hoping that uh, Jehovah remembers you. Because, beloved, I'm telling you, he is. Jesus is the only advocate. Oh, God, I, I, I got to tell you, I, I got to tell you, he is the only advocate. He is the only Savior. Our faith is in him and him alone and above all others and all else. Come on, let's go on and close this. There is no true spirituality without Jesus. There is no true inspiration outside of him. I'm sorry, keep it there. My God, chronicler, but you can burn all the sage you want. I've got Christians burning sage. That's a demonic practice that's calling demons in your house. You want a good smell in your house? Spray some Lysol. My God, spray some glade. I would even say light an incense. Back from back in the day, light up the cocoa puff. My God, light up the strawberry mango. But don't burn no sage. Trying to cleanse the atmosphere of your home. The only atmosphere cleanser is the power of God through Jesus Christ. Why we got to go after this false spirituality? There is no spirituality without him. There is no true inspiration without God and outside of him. There is no other name given among men whereby all men must be saved. I'm going to make a declaration right now and I'm going to make it loud and proud and bold. It's time to make this all all about Jesus again. Did y'all hear me what I say? It's time to make this all about Jesus again. I dare somebody, unloose your phone, unloose my God, your, your Zoom, and declare it's time to make all this about Jesus again. Come on and say now is the time. Now is the time. You can't shout it, tweet it. Write it in the chat. Somebody ought to determine. I'm going to make it about Jesus again. God, I feel like preaching. Oh, he's my soul savior. Oh, he's my way maker. Thank you for singing that song, confirming the word, Brother Ronnie. He's the reason why I live. He's the reason why I move. He's the reason why I have my being. He is the source of my supply. He is the Lord of my life. Oh, my God. Oh, let's come on, Chronicler. When I talk about faith for reformation, Remember the word faith. My God, it makes us remember that I heard what God said. I believe what God said. I obeyed what God said. And along the way, 
I made adjustment to what I say. I made adjustment to what I think. I made adjustment to the actions that I take, all to line up with what God said. My faith is in him and him alone, beyond all else. My God, now we can have true reformation because we have faith for reformation. Oh, Lord, I want to say that again. I have taken God at his word. I heard him. I believe him. I obey him and I make adjustments to everything I got to say. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. To everything I got to think, to everything that I do, I make willful adjustment and I keep up with God. I go after God. I strive to please God. I can't help myself. I've been trying to be cool about this. But, beloved, the Bible says to cry aloud and spare not to lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion and show my people their transgressions. We got to make this all about Jesus and we got to have faith in him and him alone. God, God, God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm closing now. But I believe let me slow down here, Brother Ronnie. I, I feel like jumping. Uh, maybe God going to get up in his knee. Uh, oh, God. Uh, hallelujah. Oh, my God. I believe uh, that Jesus saves uh, and that he saved me. Can anybody testify? Uh, did he save you? Say, yeah. Did he save you? Uh, I believe mm, that Jesus redeemed me. By his singular sacrifice. As we read in Hebrews chapter 9, he died once and once entered into the holy place through his blood over everything, spread his power over everything. The Bible put it this way. He died once, my God, to redeem us from our sin. I'm so glad that it died for you. He died for me. A little bit more doctrine. For three hours, he hung on the cross. Oh, I know it's not reformation. My God, back to resurrection time. But I can talk about resurrection anytime. For three hours, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He died for the sins of my past. He died for the sins of our present. He died for the sins of our future. But because of relationship, when I sin, I don't think I can get by because I have relationship with Jesus. I want to have short account with God uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to get right and stay right uh, so I repent because I don't want to offend him because I'm grateful uh, for all he's done for me. Uh, I, I said, I said I'm grateful for all he's done for me. So I believe that Jesus saved me. Do you believe it? Shall yes. I believe that Jesus redeemed my life from destruction. You believe it? Shall yes. I believe that God the Father gave his only begotten son. And, and I believe that the son gave his life in order to purchase my life. I believe that Jesus is real. Oh Lord, I believe that he sent the comforter, which we call the Holy Ghost, to live inside of us. Emmanuel 
individual is God with us. The Holy Ghost is God in me. I'm so glad for the power of the Holy Ghost. Y'all excuse me. I'm so glad for the power of God by the Holy Ghost dwelling on the inside. I'm so glad that the Lord has blessed me. I'm glad that God has lifted me up. I'm glad that God has changed my ways. I'm glad that God has given me life and that more abundantly. I'm so glad. Can somebody shout glory? Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. Wow. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I got to stop. I got to stop. But I have faith for reformation. He came to live in me. He didn't just come to live outside of me. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I'm his own. The Lord. Oh, Jesus. God. Oh, Y'all know I love hymns, right? But I have faith for reformation. As I close this message, I got two hymns I got to quote, Ronnie. Y'all forgive me for a moment. <laughs> but my hope, oh Lord, is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I dare not trust. Lord, I got to preach up in here. Lord, I can't help myself. I dare not trust the sweetest thing, but holy lean on Jesus' name. Can somebody help me say on Christ, the solid rock I stand, no all other ground is sinking sand. I got to close, but there's another hymn I got to quote. The refrain I only quote, it is a great hymn of affirmation. I need no other. Hallelujah argument. I need no other plea. It is enough that Jesus died and that he died for me. How many can testify? Ronnie, I got to get out of here. That my faith has found a resting place. Oh, my faith has found a sure place. Oh, Lord, my faith has found a joyful place. I know that some of y'all like why you're so worked up, Bishop, because he is the author and the finisher of of my faith. He is the God that's proven himself. I have faith for reformation. As I dig down deep into my spirit, man, I let God have everything that he don't like. He has everything that's disagreeable with him, and I need no other argument. I make no other argument. I make no other plea, but that his blood was shed for nobody else like it was shed for me. I know it was shed for you. But like I said before, I say it again. I take it personally. God have mercy. Whoa! I gotta go. I gotta go. But I have faith for this reformation. I'm coming back to Jesus like I should be. Oh, I want to see signs wonders and miracles. I, I want to see the power of God do more than help me pay my rent. Yeah, I need my rent paid, but I need a miracle in other areas. I need my mortgage taken care of. Yeah, but I, I need God to do some other stuff too. I, 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 I got some young folk that didn't get raised in the fear and admonition of the Lord like I did. There are more Gnostics and agnostics there are more atheists and straight up heathens. The Christian church in America has dwindled in size. Now is the time for kingdom. It's time for reformation. My brother and my sister, 
Glory, glory, glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. I must tell the truth. It's time for reformation. I'm out of time, but I'm not out of message. I want to call you to salvation right now. Jesus died for you. I know you were told different. I know you were told you have another advocate. I know you were told you have another savior. But I must say it's a lie. All due respect to whoever said it, I love you too. But it's time for the truth to prevail. Lies must cease. Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Now, he is the only one, Ronnie, that made them kind of bold declaration. Then he let them whip him. <laughs> he let them pull out his hair. He let them spit in his face. He let them crucify him on a cross. He let them mock him. He let them even put his body in the grave for three days and three nights. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. Now, until somebody else do that, you have not earned my ears. Until you can make a world, speak it out of existence, and then speak it back to its existence, because the world was without form and void for a reason. Darkness covered the face of the deep for a reason. But then God looked out on that span of massive darkness and said, let there be light. I'm not going to get into a lot of doctrine. But when the devil was kicked out of heaven, he came down and sought to destroy everything God created because he couldn't beat God. But aren't you glad that God made the earth? We don't worship it, but the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. We must get back to God. We must get back to Jesus Christ and him alone. All other ground that you're standing on a sinking sand. Come back to Jesus. Can you pray this prayer with me? Lord, keep it there chronically. I admit that I am outside of your purpose. I admit it. I admit it. I'm not saved. I'm backslidden. I've sought other ways. I've picked up other practices. I know I shouldn't be consulting the horoscope. I know I shouldn't be looking into the tea leaves. And I know I shouldn't be trying to follow the ways of, of all this foolishness, dealing with all this mysticism and religion. Lord, forgive me. I admit it. And I believe that you're the only begotten son of God. I believe that you're the only savior. Lord, I call on you today. Show me your power. Save my soul. And then I commit to follow you for the rest of my days. We call that the ABCs of salvation around these parts of Life Builders Church. And it's so easy, so simple. If you just admit that with me, believe what I said, and commit to follow Jesus, he'll take you places you've never been and give you power that you've never experienced. Can I get a witness out there? I dare somebody tighten the chat. Type in the chat. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Somebody going to see this a little later today because there are people that may have missed it because they had to work or maybe you still sleep. I don't know. I'm talking to you. The anointing is still here enough for you as well. And I want you to type, I believe. I believe. If you've given your heart to Jesus, we made this altar call. We pray for you. We have people standing by right now. We have our phone number at 443-776-0255. If it's busy or no one answered because they're on another call, leave a message, please, and we'll call you back. You can also email us. We return email at lbcministry at yahoo.com. Oh, yes, we do. We return emails, lbcministry at yahoo.com and then we have our website that on our website 
You can write us directly as well. That's lbcbaltimore.org. lbcbaltimore.org. Look for that place to not just give, but to write us, to contact us. And I guarantee through those three mechanisms that we have listed on the screen, again, phone number 443-776-0255. Again, email lbcministry at yahoo.com. And last but not least, website lbcbaltimore.org. Elder Kathy, come on. I, I'm about to go and dance. I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I'm doing all I can to calm myself down. Elder Kathy, please come on, get this. And I feel myself heading up again. Hallelujah! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. God bless y'all. Minister of the month, you got it. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Ooh. What a word. What a word. Hallelujah. I told you, you would not be disappointed. Oh, you glory. Full. Hallelujah. 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 We just thank you uh, for that word, Bishop. And I just pray that everyone has received it. Faith for reformation. Faith for re reformation. We are that Acts 2 church. Amen. Amen. We are that church that's going to have mind renewal and conversion, right? We're going to do what God has called us to do. We're going to represent what? The will and purpose of God in the earth. We are. We're going to what? Seek God to be powerful. And we talked about the powerful names of God this morning. We're going to live a life that what? Impacts in order to bring a needed change. And for those of you who just prayed that prayer that our bishop went over with you, we're rejoicing and saying hallelujah because you have come into the fold and your life has been changed for the better. It will never be the same again. Never, ever, ever be the same again. What a powerful word. The word of God is what? Still relevant. And guess what? After a word like that, guess what happened? The devil is backing up. The devil is backing up because you have been given something on the inside. You're not going to be that type of Christian that when the devil see you wake up in the morning, he's smacking his lips, getting excited because he know he can do something with you, right? Last, last week, Bishop talked about reacting versus responding. But after a word like that, you got everything you need in you so that when the devil see you, when he gets up, he's shaking in his boots. He's going to go to somebody else because you got faith, right? For reformation, you've been built up. You got everything that you need physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, because of the God that we serve, the almighty, powerful God. And we have that faith that unmovable, unshakable faith in Jesus Christ and his word. So we can have what? True reformation because we have faith for reformation. Amen. Amen and amen and amen. So I thank you, Bishop, for that word. I thank you to everyone who has joined us this morning. We are so glad that you came and I know you were not disappointed. We're going to move along right along in our service. And it is something that we all get excited about. We call it opportunity time. It is opportunity time, right? What is opportunity time? I'm so glad you asked. It is a part of our service that everyone can play a part in, amen? Amen and amen and amen. So we have a giving statement that we use. Uh, that we declare over our giving. And this is where we sow seed, tithes and offerings back into the ministry. And we show God that we're appreciative for the tool that he's given us in the form of money, gifts and talents that we can use to further his kingdom here on earth. And for those of us who have you know, a job, we earn a salary, et cetera, this is our time to pay our tithes and our offerings into this good soil, this good ground. So join with me in saying our declaration over our offering. It is opportunity time. Life Builders Church has generous and faithful tithers and givers. Your generous 
Your generous giving adds value to this ministry. I got to say that again. Your generous giving adds value to this ministry. So now is your opportunity to continue your generosity and giving. We have multiple ways that you can uh, sow your seeds into the ministry. You can give online. We have several options via Cash App, PayPal. Uh, you can give online at www.lbcbaltimore.org. All right, Cash App is at dollar sign, Life Builders Church and PayPal at Life Builders Church, LBC Ministry at yahoo.com. So at this time, why don't you sow your seed and donate utilizing the multiple online methods? If you would like to mail us your donation, our mailing address for Life Builders Church is Care of Vantage Inc. at 100 West Road, Suite 300, Towson, Maryland, 21204. And to all who have given or will give, we thank you in advance for your generosity and you can give at any time. So thank you. All right. I just wanna just say a quick prayer over the, that offering. Lord, we thank you and praise you right now for the generous givers. We thank you for their generosity, God. We pray that you breathe and blow on every seed, every offering in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that the enemy will not cloud their judgment or their thinking about sowing and giving because it is biblical, it's of your word. So Father, right now, we thank you in the name of Jesus for opening doors that every person who has a desire to give would sow and you will be faithful to your word in Malachi 3 and 10. So we thank you in Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, thank you again for giving. I'd like to quickly move on to our announcements. Uh, the mayor's office of employment development will be holding a criminal record expungement fair. That's on November 22nd, 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. at the Northwest Career Center, which is located at the Mondawmin Mall in Baltimore City. That's located at 2401 Liberty Heights Avenue, Suite 302. And there's a phone number there, 410-396-7873. If you know someone who could benefit from this fair, we ask you to share this information. You can click a picture on your phone or on your screen and make sure that they know about this upcoming criminal record expungement fair, November the 22nd. All right, thank you. All right, covenant keepers, marriage, married couples, we have a marriage weekend coming up. And the theme is loving intentionally in 2023. Again, the theme is loving intentionally in 2023. So please mark your calendars for Friday, February the 10th at 7 p.m. and Saturday, February the 11th at 10 a.m. This is in 2023 for our Covenant Keepers Marriage Weekend. They have special guest pastors coming in, Pastors Erica and Placida uh, Brazewell, I hope I didn't butcher that name, and Jeffrey and Annette Sams. This is gonna occur live via Zoom, and we're asking for a $25 donation per couple. So that's $12.50 for the husband and $12.50 for the wife. Come on, you can make that donation in Jesus' name. All right, so we thank you so much for that. God bless. All right, Covenant Keepers, mark it up early, February 2023. All right, if you're looking for a seasonal job with an eternal purpose, we have this uh, flyer here from Samaritan Purse, and they are offering uh, seasonal jobs to help make Christmas better for children. Operation Christmas Child, all right? So we're gonna ask that you scan the QR code to apply, or you can go to samaritanpurse.org slash OC Seasonal Plus. All right, that was a little small for me, but I found it. So God bless if you're looking for a seasonal job with an eternal purpose, Samaritan Purpose Purse is here to help you. All right, you better hold, hurry up because we are in that holiday season. I was just out over the weekend and Christmas decorations are up and out. All right, LBC, 
You know how we do here at Life Builders Church. We love our seasoned saints, right? Come on, somebody put some hearts in the chat. So put some reactions next to your um, little Brady Box bunch, those hearts. We love our seasoned saints and we always take very good care of them. So we want to uh, give our seasoned saints their Thanksgiving baskets, harvest baskets, whatever they need so that they can have a full Thanksgiving meal. So it is that time for LBC to show our seasoned saints some love, some hearts. And if you're interested in contributing to the Thanksgiving baskets, whatever you can do, canned goods, sweet potatoes, string beans, stuffing, everybody loves stuffing and a little bit of gravy, uh, you know, please reach out to Sister Rise, our awesome Sister Rise, who loves to just uh, give and show our seasoned saints how much we love them. So please, if you're interested in contributing to the Thanksgiving baskets, please see Sister Rise. So Life Builders Church, I know you're gonna show up and show out in a big way. And if you are in need of anything over the Thanksgiving holidays, Sister Rise is also your source. Her name is Rise Wilcox, um, and you can reach out to her and she will gladly uh, assist you. So Thanksgiving baskets, our donations. Thanksgiving, if you have a need, please make sure that we know about it. All right. And you can leave a confidential message in multiple ways that Bishop and I have shared through email or our phone number. Thank you again. Looking forward to it. All right. As I stated, when I opened up uh, earlier today, we had our live in-person worship at Pikesville High School. Um, and we do that every first Sunday of the month. So our last one for 2022, which I know you don't want to miss, is going to be Sunday, December the 4th, 2022, 10 o'clock a.m. Pikesville High School Auditorium, which is located at 7621 Labyrinth Road. That's in Pikesville, Maryland, 21208. And we have something special that we want you to do on this first Sunday. So December 4th, first Sunday of December is LBC Strong Day, all right? LBC Strong Day. After hearing a word like that, I know somebody's muscles was built up. Come on now. So we would like for all LBC partners to wear your LBC sweatshirt. If not, you can wear any combination of blue and gold. And we're going to just show up and show out for LBC Strong Day, first Sunday in-person worship, December 4th, 2022 at 10 a.m. All right. So if you, you, you planning on attending, come on, put something in the chat and say, I'm wearing my sweatshirt. See me there. Be there. I got it. LBC Strong Day. There are even reactions in the chat that has a muscle. So come on, if you're participating, you want to be with us. On Sunday, December 4th, put some reactions in the chat. We appreciate it. As you know, we have our Wednesday impact groups every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. The meeting ID and passcode and the link is on the screen for you. Please don't hesitate to join us. We have been having powerful lessons on the parables. We want to what? Finish strong this 2022 every Wednesday, 7.30 p.m. What? impact group so that you can have an impact in the world like Bishop preached this Sunday. Please join us every day from 6.15 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. at 605-475-4700. The access code is 585263-POUND, where we have intercessors praying for 15 minutes strong, powerful. They get in and the presence of God shows up and we kick off our day in a mighty way. So we invite all, you don't have to be a member of Life Builders Church, any person, you're up in the morning, you wanna get a good start to your day, join the LBC Intercessory Prayer Line from 6.15 a.m. to 6.30 a.m. Your morning's pretty busy, you possibly can't join. How about stopping in on Wednesdays at 6 p.m., same number, same access code, every Wednesday, 6 p.m., you can hear from our bishop and first lady praying for, for all in this nation and like LBC um, on Wednesday evenings at six o'clock p.m. All right? 
All right, you know, prayer is so important to all in every ministry. All right, it's that time, LBC. Another great day uh, in the presence of the Lord, worship, hearing a great word from our bishop. You can kind of relax a little bit because what our Ravens have a bye, our strong Ravens where our quarterback is marvelous, Lamar Jackson, right? All right, I'm sorry for you Pittsburgh fans and anybody else, but this is Ravens Nation. All right, so we got to buy today. We're going to kick our feet back a little bit and just wallow in this word that we heard so we can make sure that our faith has been reformed in Jesus' name. So thank you so much for joining us. Come back next Sunday. It will be virtual again. You won't be disappointed. We just enjoyed everything that happened today. Lord, we thank you for this word. We thank you, Lord God for using our bishop in a mighty way. Just restore all that he poured out, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Replenish, refinish everything that he needs. We already claim healing on that knee in Jesus' name, Lord God. But he showed us today, standing up, sitting down, when the word's in you, it's just gonna come forth with power and authority. So we thank you for uh, a speedy recovery and healing of his knee, Lord God. Bless his home, bless his family. Bless all, everything going on in his house, Lord God. We thank you that he lacks nothing in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for every person watching right now. I thank you, Lord God, that their faith has been increased that reformation will occur, that their minds have been renewed, that they are ready to have an impact in this world. We got so much work to do. We serve notice, Lord God, that Life Builders Church is going out and taking territory and making sure that we decree and declare the gospel that our bishop shared with us. Jesus loves you. He sent his, his son to die on the cross for you. When you believe, all you have to do is believe it, confess it you will have the gift of eternal life. That is what the gospel, the good news, and guess what? As he stated today, there is no other story like the gospel. No other religion can claim the message that Jesus did, the I am that I am, hallelujah. No other religion, what? Gives you peace. No other religion pays your debt. No other religion gives you eternal life but the gospel. So we thank you for that word this morning in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. Now watch over us, God. Never leave us as your word says. Continue to be with us, strengthen us. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Ghost who is our comforter and best friend. We decree and declare that we will engage, lean in into intimacy with your word so that you can walk and talk with us daily, Lord God, so that we can accomplish everything that you ordain for each and every one of our lives to have so that every gift that you put inside us will be used in a maximum power, a dunamis power for the work that you have here on this earth through us and us in the mighty and precious name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, God. We say hallelujah. You are good, great, awesome God. We called you Jehovah this morning. We called you Lord God, our almightyful God. We called you L-O-M, Lord God. We just bless you and praise you, Emmanuel, with us. You are a good, good God and worthy, worthy, worthy of our praise. And we bless your name. We say hallelujah and thank you for the privilege to even open our mouths and call it out because it's so magnificent and precious and powerful. Bless and praise and worship the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Have a blessed day. Have an awesome day. Have a wonderful day. In the name, in the name, in the name, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. God dwells in the midst of Life Builders Church. God dwells in the midst of a blessed community. Grace and peace be unto you. Peace be multiplied. Go in the name of Jesus. Have a wonderful day.